Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and you are currently joining me in the Awkward Space Solutions series. Today's episode is all about those awkward niches, alcoves, cutouts, ledges, whatever you wanna call it. If you have it in your home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Not all niches start out as these beautifully recessed little alcoves in your home that you know exactly what to do with. Some cutouts are downright awkward. You know those little cutouts on the side of your wall or like jutting down from the ceiling, or maybe it's the first thing you see when you enter your home. It makes you feel as though you're somehow forced to style it, but you don't even know where to begin. In today's video, I wanna share my top tips on how to highlight these architectural details so they become unique and personalized, distinct aspects of your home. Today's topic is one that I may not have received a ton of requests for, but I still feel really inclined to talk about speaking as your resident interior design guru. Now, why do these details exist? If your home was built in the late 90s or the early 2000s, you may have a ton of these architectural details in your home. This is before we all shared all of our home decor and inspiration online. I feel like the builders probably went to some convention where they said all of these like niches, cutouts, and ledges are in. I don't know where all of you are from, but this is so, so common in Southern California. When I started out my career designing a lot of homes in Irvine and Tustin, I mean, you cannot get away with seeing one new build home without it. So what's the problem? The typical issues that I see most often is how to style it. How to decorate it in a way that's meaningful and coordinates with the rest of your home. Paint techniques, texture techniques, and really how to treat the architectural detail so that you highlight it or diminish it completely. Today's video is all about sharing tips and tricks on how to style niches, alcoves, and ledges in entryways, living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, and more. What is a niche versus an alcove versus a cutout versus a ledge? Niches and alcoves are used rather interchangeably and they simply mean a recess that is cut out into the wall of a room. A cutout can then mean the same thing, except sometimes these cutouts are angular and they're not perfectly squared or arched. A ledge is typically seen on the upper half of a wall and it's usually the portion where the wall and ceiling meet. Niches come in all different shapes and sizes. They're most commonly either squared or arched, shallow or deep. The shallow ones are usually about 12 inches or less and the deep ones are considered about 15 inches or more in depth. Let's talk about those entryway niches and alcoves. You may have an arch niche that's the first thing you see when guests open the entry door. You most typically see them decorated with a pretty vase and a bunch of flowers. But there is so much you could do to highlight these architectural niches that will bring so much more interest to your entry. You could add texture to the back of the niche with stacked stone or wallpaper. You can custom trim the shape of the niche with beautiful marble detailing. You could add panel molding to the inside of a large double height niche to add architectural interest.
Moving on to those squared entry niches. These squared niches are angular in shape. My favorite way to address it is with framed or canvas art right in the center of the niche. If you have a little ledge and enough of a depth to the niche, I love a sculptural vase, maybe with some flowers inside. You want to give the negative space a little bit of breathing room, so don't fill up the entire size of the niche. Think about filling up the vertical height of the niche about two thirds of the way. Any less than two thirds of the way, the scale of your decorative object may not be proportional to the size of the niche. If you have space in front of the niche, think about anchoring that wall with a beautiful console that is proportional to the width of the niche. I love how chic these simple black and white framed photography look in these entryway niches. This is exactly how I would style my own home if I had this condition. If you have a larger entryway niche that is open from floor to ceiling, first measure the width of the space and the depth of space allowed. In order to make this niche feel like a custom built-in, you would then source freestanding furniture like a little console or a dresser, or maybe even a nightstand that fits squarely within this opening. If you're feeling a little fancy, you can even custom make a built-in entry bench that fits the niche from wall to wall. If instead of a recessed niche, you have a ledge that is cut out from the wall on the upper portion of the ceiling, there are so many ways that you could disguise it without doing anything at all. You can see how this entry alcove was built out and it almost forced the homeowners to decorate it in some way. If you love this look, there's absolutely nothing awkward about it. But I want to give you a designer tip to help you focus less on the ledge and more about the architectural height of the space. My advice if you have this ledge in your home is to simply not decorate it and just install lighting. Source a beautiful light fixture that fills the scale of the space. The idea is to make this ledge disappear completely and call attention to your fabulous light fixture instead. I'm a maximalist by nature, but this is the one time that I feel that less is more. Moving on to the niches and alcoves found in your living room. They're most commonly seen next to the fireplace. You may have a fireplace in the center of the room with openings on both sides. Always start with measuring the space. At the bare minimum, you can source furniture to fit squarely within these alcoves. They could be small dressers or cabinets, or even full height bookcases.
You can also create half built-ins with built-in cabinetry below, leaving the upper portion of the alcove open for shelving or decorative objects. If you want to go all out, you can do a fully custom built-in from floor to ceiling. Let's talk about the dining rooms. Dining room niches are really perfect for buffet areas if it's deep enough. How do you know if your alcove is deep enough? A typical plate is 10 to 12 inches in diameter. So if the alcove is deeper than that, it's perfect for a built-in buffet. If the alcove is too shallow, consider installing a wine storage or vase display. or even a recessed wall for all your artwork, plants, or even a custom dining settee. Think about the function of your dining room and how to creatively install built-ins to support your needs. Bedroom niches, alcoves, and ledges come in all shapes and sizes. You may have a large headboard cutout that is perfect for your statement bed frame. You may have small niches beside the bed for additional storage, You may have stacked niches for display. If you have a vertical opening that is tall enough, consider installing shelving for your books, your candles, or even additional storage. If the niche is deep enough, try building a little nook for your toddler to climb into. If it's one single niche that stands alone, keep the decor minimal and just style with your bare minimum bedtime essentials like a book and your favorite framed art.
Let's talk about those bathroom niches. I'm not talking about your shower or bathtub niche, the ones that you put your shampoo, conditioner, and soaps into. I mean, those are really obvious. Those niches beside the sink are perfect for baskets to keep the area tidy. Try taking a page from your favorite spa and style the niches with shelves that feature beautiful bath products, soaps, and candles. If you have a standalone niche, never underestimate the power of a simple potted plant to bring brightness into the space. Here are some other fun creative ideas to bring dimension to your niche. You can paint the inside of the niche in a contrasting color to the wall. You can wallpaper every surface of the inset of the niche to bring dimension to the space. Or if you have a cool floor to ceiling arch niche like this, you can even fabricate a makeshift desk area. Today's case studies bring you a lot of examples on what I would not do in a space with niches, alcoves, ledges, and cutouts. I'd like to start by dissecting the key issues I see from each image and give you examples on what you could do instead to make the space feel more current, fresh, and modern. In this first case study, you'll see multiple niches. They're either stacked or scattered or perfectly lined up in a row. The idea is to keep the look very consistent. The same size, scale, and depth of the object that you install into the niche. You may just texture the inside of the niche. Consider adding strategic lighting, maybe down lights and up lights, to call attention to the shape of the niche. When you have multiple niches in one single area, Consider installing the decorative objects according to a specific theme. It could be sculptures and artwork collected from a country on your travels. It's not necessary to find something for every opening of the niche. Some things are better left unsaid. The second case study is all about those niches beside your stairwell. Leaving them alone just feels like a missed opportunity to help draw the eyes up onto the second level. At the bare minimum, I would install some lighting, then fill with your favorite art pieces that are similar in size. To free up surface space, you may even install a framed art on the back of the niche cutout. I love the idea of this stairwell with all the framed art, but I wish they kept it consistent by installing the portrait framed artwork on every single niche. This would give the stairwell some continuity and not make it feel so fragmented. 
This next case study dissects this entertainment center. These entertainment centers were built out from the exact same builder, but you can see that they are styled in a multitude of ways. Let's start with my don'ts. You might have an entertainment center with cutouts similar to this. A series of arches, a series of squares, a series of open areas that you just don't know how to style. When is too much too much? Think about keeping the area minimal but meaningful. You don't have to address every single ledge and every single shelf. Think about creating a beautiful vignette with collectible items that become a topic of conversation. You want your home to tell your story, not be filled with meaningless items that hold no value. To sum it all up, niches and alcoves could be a beautiful thing, but some architectural details are better left unstyled. Shallow niches look best with framed art centered right in the niche. Deep niches are best for shelving. If the niche is tall, stack shelves. If the niche is small, a simple vessel or sculpture will do. I hope this video gave you some really cool ideas on how to address those awkward alcoves, niches, cutouts, and ledges. If you like this type of content and you're enjoying the Awkward Space Solutions series so far, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have an awkward niche or alcove in your home and how you addressed it. I know that our viewers comb the comment section looking for issues similar to their own, so I hope that your tips can help everyone out. We have one more episode planned for this series and I am saving the best for last. It is the awkward open concept space plan that you all have been writing in about. This really tops a list of everyone's awkward spaces because you really don't know how to design around it. I'll be continuing to add more to the Awkward Space Solutions series in the next roundup. So of course, if you have any issues of awkward spaces in your home, leave me a comment below. Share this video with anyone you know who has an awkward niche, alcove, or ledge in their home. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.